This episode of the Cult Popshire podcast was brought to you by our Patreon. If you want to tell us which films we should watch, get up to two extra exclusive podcasts a month, give us something to talk about in the post credit scenes at the end of each episode, or even contribute to the discussion in the episode itself, then please consider joining the cult and donating at www.patreon.com slash cultpopture. Hello, this is, uh, we interrupt your irregularly scheduled program because we told you all last week that there wouldn't be a new episode, it'd be a Patreon sample pack mm. this week on the Cold Pops podcast, and yet here we are with something that's not quite a real episode of the podcast, but not a recycled Patreon episode either. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, this is, this is technically an episode of Film Franchise Follow-Ups, which is our our Patreon podcast, which um, you would have heard two weeks ago on the, on the main feed. But um, this is something we promised you a long time ago, fans, dear mm. listeners. Um, if listeners you, of the Cold Popshire podcast, of which this is, mm, by the way. If you cast your mind back to early 2020, um, long before any of this, uh, but not, not that long before, and in fact, it's kind of important to the story that it's, immediately before um mm. the this this whole pandemic business we we covered a little series called james bond on the podcast it, it mm. took up a fucking massive chunk of our 2020 just covering all these shitty fucking bond movies we split it by actor we didn't cover another franchise until almost may mm. um because we were just we we're just doing these james bond um but it was to tie into the um april release of daniel craig's final outing as james bond no time to die however as i mentioned there was a pandemic and uh yeah we were uh, the film was delayed but when it was when it got delayed we were already two months into this like four month venture to do Mm. these these films so uh we were forced to stick it out we said when No Time to Die comes out, we'll put a, a film franchise follow-ups episode on it on the main feed um, because we always saw that as like an incomplete um, thing. Yeah. So this is not um, an episode from Patreon that you're that we've hmm. repurposed for for the main feed. This is the first ever film franchise follow-ups episode that is being released on the main feed. And for all our patrons, there will be a separate episode of film franchise follow-ups hmm. exclusive to Patreon later on this month. Uh, and so, yeah, we're finishing what we started. In a lot of ways, we're doing what Daniel Craig did when he finished Spectre hmm. in 2015 and was like, God... I would rather die than do this again. And people were like, oh, there's a lot of story threads hanging. And he was like, fine, I'll finish what I started. That's what we're doing today. We're we're going to talk for a little bit uh. about No Time to Die, the 25th uh, official James Bond movie and the final outing of Daniel Craig. Uh, no. and, and, you know... You know, it's not like the James Bond series is particularly fresh in our minds. We haven't rewatched them since covering them for the podcast in early 2020. Uh, And also, to make matters even worse, um, this could have been a much earlier episode if New Zealand had its shit sorted Mm. and didn't need to go into a lockdown earlier this year, um, which meant that Richard up in Auckland could not go see this movie the same time as I could. So I saw this movie about a month ago, and Richard saw this movie about last night. So uh, (laughs) this is... There yeah, around about last night. <laughs> and so it's it's a situation where um, Richard is probably going to remember this movie better than I do. Which doesn't happen just... a lot. <laughs> um, and yeah, we're going to discuss it. Um, oh, do we need to go through? No, we already sort of did that, didn't we? What? What did we do for, didn't we have like, sorry for the loose episode, folks. Um, the, didn't we have on each of the James Bond episodes, we had different segments we did. It was like we ranked the, um, oh yeah, what was it? It was the songs, the theme yeah. songs, and we talked about which category they fit into. I think technically we we yeah we the already title did as well. that yeah, and the title we already did that yeah. on the Daniel Craig episode. 
Um, and I remember, I think I said the spoilers for no time to die, by the way, I think I'd said something along the lines of, I'm pretty sure that no time to die will fit into the subsection of James Bond titles that are just sort of vague, ominous quote, Mm. like, you know, sayings that could, any of them could be called. Uh, but I did say it could maybe pertain specifically to this movie. If the rumors are true that, um, Rami Malek is playing Dr. No. Mm. Those rumors. I said spoilers. I warned people. Yeah, but I like just just genuinely like this is a full spoiler discussion for No Time to Die um the whole mm. way through um so yeah, do do seek out the film. The film is available on um uh like VOD now, which is how I watched it. So mm-hmm. uh, which is interesting cuz it's actually cuz they were planning like a longer theatrical window they only did like 30 days in the end but they said um they were they kind of realized oh i guess bond fans tend to be older and they're probably the people that are more hesitant to go back to the cinema so um that's Mm. why they did it Uh, which is a nice Mm. like rare you know um moment of compassion from a film studio yeah um yeah so let's try and make this as similar to the uh the other you know as if as if you could listen to the daniel craig episode we did and then immediately click onto this one and it'll sound like you know that was it was you know Mm. it's part of that episode almost which means uh we need to tell you which i'm desperately looking up right now because we actually as we said before we weren't gonna we were gonna do another patreon um sample pack yeah uh, but then we didn't know this was coming out and, and we thought, why not? Um, so this was directed by Carrie Joji Fukunaga. Um, it was based on a screenplay that was partially punched up by Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Mm. All of these were very interesting factoids at the time. Factoids? Sorry, we're not allowed to use that word. All of these were very interesting Factlots. facts at the time when when we were um, when we were waiting for this movie to come out and by the time I'm sitting in the theatre I'm like, oh that's right, Fukunaga directed this. And mm. I'm like, oh that's right Phoebe Waller-Bridge punched up the script. <laughs> like all these things which at the time were really interesting. Um, do you know what this has on Rotten Tomatoes, Richard? I do as 84%. 84 percent 84 percent and i'm not going to go through all 25 24 other james bond movies but i can tell you <sighs> that this puts it um at 84 percent that means it is um it is behind skyfall and casino royale casino royale being 94 and skyfall being 92 quantum of solace being 64 inspector being 63 mm. uh this is you know so it fits between the good ones and the bad ones and may i say boy is that an apt description for what this movie is yeah 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 <laughs> this movie is the bridge between the good daniel craig ones and the bad daniel craig ones mm. in my opinion yeah it's more good than it is bad but it's certainly not it certainly didn't blow me away and i certainly wasn't um i remember when we did the the daniel craig episode i talked about how um like carrie joji fukunaga is a very interesting director to get on a james bond movie and and because there was a lot of um there was a lot of worries for this movie uh in the in the production stage because danny boyle was originally attached to direct it mm. and was then then left the project due to creative differences which we talked about how that usually indicates the studio wanting to go a safer route with the film however carrie joji fukunaga is not really a director you get to fulfill a, a a producer mm, he's like no ron himself. howard no he's no ron howard you did right <laughs> uh but that being said aside from a um format breaking ending that was pretty inevitable mm. uh, for anyone who was paying attention to the series i would say that this is a pretty standard james bond yeah let, let's let's talk about what is it about you want me to vaguely remember or do you want to <laughs> I, I, I i can take this one yeah yeah so uh, we we open uh in media res um no mm-hmm. we, we open on a flashback where uh madeline swan who you'll remember from the La- uh, leah sado's character from specter who you're forced to remember and remember her backstory the, the worst thing about this movie that it, that, yeah, it, yeah. that, it, it that you need to so see much, specter yeah. <laughs> yeah we see a flashback of her as a little kid um her mum gets killed by um this guy Safin, who's played by rami malik who's the villain of the film um and she ends up surviving she falls under under like a frozen lake and he saves her so he has this like connect you know this weird oh he maybe he's not completely bad but then uh yeah. cut to present day 
Bond is uh, living the kind of the the chill life, and no, oh no, he's, he hasn't retired just yet. But anyway, it's he, so he's sort of settled down with with Madeline, and then he's missing uh, his uh, his girlfriend Vespa from the first uh, from Casino Royale, and goes to visit her 15 grave fifteen years earlier. Yeah, fifteen years earlier, um, they were together for what like two weeks. Um, and she was and she was she died at the age of 23 we see on the grave really she was 23 in that yeah. movie was eva green 23 well the, the, the character was yeah all right <laughs> looking up how old eva green is yeah all right how old was eva green mm. in 2006 it gave me casino royale and i chose no i chose no i'm going for she was 26 all right oh well wow. yeah, hot, fair hot damn <laughs> fair enough <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, um, the uh, the tomb explodes and he thinks Madeline did it, so he sets her on a train and you know says, I'm never going to see you again. Cut to five years later, he's retired, but he's pulled back in for one last job um, because of this bioweapon. So this is this is the, the, the we're now at the, the thrust of the, the whole plot. Felix Leiter, mm-hmm. Jeffrey Wright, um, Uatu the Watcher himself um, comes and... and says to to bond that he he needs his help um yeah there's this there's this bioweapon which is it's funny that and you can see why this was the first film to be like nah not releasing <laughs> in a pandemic um because yeah the whole thing is about this bioweapon which is uh nanobots which infect people like a virus upon their touch and they they coded to your dna so you can make it kill a specific person and so yeah there's what bond goes to this um the specter party and this mist is released the, the party it's a birthday for blofeld who's controlling the party from or he can see the party and everything from prison um and he releases the mist being like don't worry everyone it's only half full of bond and then he ends up killing everyone except bond because there's this russian scientist who um tampered with it and uh, yeah then it's kind of just yeah they, they, they sort of realize what's going on and he ends up having to team back up with madeline who's now has a daughter who's um five years old the same amount of time that um james bond last saw she has daniel craig's piercing blue eyes but she says he's not you she's not yours don't worry <laughs> and the whole thing culminates that they go to this island where the Her- project heracles is being created and yeah there's a big big battle with um Saffin and all that the film ends again last spoiler one you're getting um that he manages to get all the, the good guys get off the island bond gets infected with heracles um coded so that it will kill madeline or her daughter if he touches them and so he says well there's no point trying to get off the island come on nuke it because they need to nuke the island because it's yeah, they can't let this mm. this this thing exist um so he calls madeline one last time who says psych she was your daughter um anyway laters and he's like laters and then um yeah he he gets obliterated um and- on screen without any room wiggle room mm. for future writers to bring back daniel craig as the character something that had to have been stipulated in his contract. yeah and then you sit through the credits and it says james bond will return mm. there's a few things as well in there that um since he's retired there's now um uh lashana lynch um is play as 007 she's the new one who's been given um that role mm-hmm. and um he also teams up very 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 briefly with Anna Damas as Paloma a character I was told was like best character in the film highlight of the film give her her own spin-off and the and like I I blinked and missed her cameo in the film um and was like oh well she must be back because of the way everyone talks about her I think she's great I thought she was the best part of the film if I hadn't if I hadn't had her hyped up so much beforehand I would have immediately forgotten she's in the film because it's quite a long film as well she appears very brief yeah she appears briefly at the start and i would have been like oh okay yeah (laughs) that's right yeah she was in there i don't remember what she did but i i think what i think there are plenty of characters across the james bond movies that have the exact same role and screen time in the film as anna de armis's character the difference is is he usually fucks them yeah, yeah. And, and she's this, grossed they're, they're out going, by the idea of fucking him. <laughs> and this, they're going out of their way to be like, no, no, feminist Bond, um, which I say cynically 
but it's a good thing. It's like a very complicated cocktail of mm. uh, <laughs> social issues in my mind playing right now. Um, but I think that's that's almost why she's in there to show that um, Bond isn't just going to get into bed with anyone now. He's changed. He's in love with uh, Chick's notes, Madeline. Uh, <laughs> you swan. know, like this f- swan. Thank you so much. I knew that. I knew that. Um, and I think that's that. I think it's a very deliberate thing to try and be like this this uh this character would usually fulfill a different purpose in the story it would give us our um end of the or start of the second act sex scene but Mm. not not no longer you know i think it's very interesting you brought up the stuff about how it like it's very similar to covid and it is very similar to covid because it's not just Mm. bio warfare i mean uh, to, to be fair i like i had to bring that up because it is the plot of the film thank you well i'm thanking you nonetheless um you came to the plate and you didn't miss (laughs) i understood the assignment (laughs) yeah you understood the assignment (laughs) um because it is it is very much like covid and what was surely an accident but right down to the like like how infectious they they, they specify an accident well okay what i'm saying is (laughs) is it's interesting isn't it that if you release this at a start of a pandemic everyone's gonna be like this is distasteful you release it toward the end fingers crossed of a pandemic people go wow it's so um it is truly a post-covid film you know it is mm. truly a pandemic era film because it does feel like that it does feel like it 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 is there's metaphor and analogy in the story for the world we currently live in potentially by accident and i thought Mm. that was an interesting thing about it what do you think about that uh yeah everything you said was great so um (laughs) we're good we're good at this now aren't we (laughs) (laughs) um so in terms of like what we thought of the film i Mm. um yeah it's it's the worst good bond film which like what i mean by that is that there's four good Bond movies, and I rank them like this: Casino Royale, Goldeneye, Skyfall, No Time to Die. Skyfall and No Time to Die are around the same, and then there's a massive chasm, and then it's like pick whatever fucking one you want as number five because mm. they're all shit. Yeah, I yeah, agree. but but like this this oh. one, it's like it's a competent movie. It's watchable because because you talk to a lot of people who are like uh, it, Skyfall seems to be the one that's like oh really i thought skyfall was shit or no skyfall is the best one and it's like skyfall is watchable you can follow it it's a quite a good time which means it's in the top three Mm. Mm. yeah i agree yeah i think that the i i rank skyfall can probably considerably above no time to die and i think i do that because skyfall certainly got more faults but the the highs of skyfall i felt were a lot higher than the highs of no time to die Mm. and i don't know i think there is there is more there is more meat on the bone of skyfall than there is on the bone of no time to die and you know i i i I didn't think rami malik was particularly breathtaking no i thought yeah just uh, he's just playing himself I, like he's he's <laughs> creepy as fuck i'll give him that um but it is just himself yeah um whereas you know javier bardem is a, is a more compelling villain and yeah and yeah of course yeah because we, we kind of talked about this on the bond episode that like the idea of like oh they make such a great bond villain but it's like there actually aren't that many iconic ones and it's not like th- there's there's not a, a giant roster of like huge actors that like took on those roles you know well i think that you're that i I, I, looking at through a modern lens i guess that and and also the lens of how many bond movies there are compared to regular franchises and it's like you can say there's not there's only there's maybe only six or seven iconic bond movies well i sorry iconic bond villains and it's like well there's probably only six or seven iconic villains from any well (laughs) i I would say that like uh, um you you could say the same this sort of thing about um marvel villains you could do and that it's like it's a similar thing but i think that uh, yeah marvel i mean it has only a couple of like really truly forgettable villains but they're yeah the similar kind of thing with it when you when someone's cast as like a marvel villain it's like oh yeah let's see what they do they probably going to do the same thing as everyone else but um but yeah bond villains it's like they're they're treated they're held in this in this weird high esteem that i don't think they've actually earned really Hmm. Hmm. fair enough 
I don't disagree. Um, so I, I have a fun piece. Uh, so we, we do a segment on um, Film Franchise Fortnite. It's called Dumb IMDb Trivia. And I was going to do some research for it. But do you want to know something interesting and, and peculiar, an unverified fact about No Time to Die? So can I guess what it is? What? Is it that this is the only F-bomb in a James Bond movie? uh no oh it might be um <laughs> because uh m says like fucking hell it's at some point yeah it's it's it's, and, it's just like yeah yeah it's, it's, it's weird eh? <laughs> i don't know, i liked it as far as, far as f bombs lone f bombs in a 25 film series go yeah. <laughs> right. no what so what 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 um this it doesn't actually so much pertain to the film but okay so often when you go into indb sometimes there'll be like two or three pieces of trivia and one of them's dumb and you're like oh well cool. I'll copy and paste that sometimes you have to read through you know a few dozen uh, mm. pieces of trivia I, no time to die has mm. 339 trivia entries interesting maybe that'll happen when a movie gets delayed yeah like but you would assume right? that something like I, I had a look and i found like a list of like supposedly the most um trivia items per film and so it says things like spider-man 2 which has 220 ish and my kind of um what i assumed would have the most pieces of trivia is the lord of the rings trilogy Mm -hmm. two towers and return of the king both have 200 to 220 fellowship of the ring has 336 so no time to Mm -hmm. die beats it by three however if you look at the word count which i did (laughs) i like copy and paste into a document uh no time to die is like over thirty one thousand words um whereas the lord of the rings uh fellowship of the ring is only about eighteen thousand words so they're all of the lord of the rings ones are like um peter jackson gave one of the rings in the movies uh, to elijah wood and andy circus as a gift when the shoot was finished they both thought they had the only one the the daniel the no time to die ones are like full like interviews they're so they're all like a paragraph long and there's 339 of them it's insane this like i've got no time to read all of this <laughs> like I, I, that's why i said like i i it's so hard to verify but this might be the most trivia items on imdb and that is that the dumbest piece of imdb trivia of all mm. Yeah, like, uh, let, let us know if you can find... That should be added to the trivia of mm. <laughs> No Time to Die. Yeah, I'll see. It's, uh, uh, Star Wars is another one that um, what you'd assume would have a lot. Um, mm-hmm. Just because the, these films are just... The the backgrounds of them are so... Oh, okay, no, so t- tell you what. Uh, a New Hope has 466 items. Oh, well, never mind then. Never mind then. Although, I'm going to I'm gonna check the word count of this. Because, <laughs> again, they're smaller... <laughs> Um, although, yeah, I am having to scroll very far down to get all of these. Oh, hot damn. Hope we never cover Star Wars um, because <laughs> they are banned films. <laughs> Not that James Bond is any better oh, no, James Bond banned. sucks, man. Yeah, no, actually, there's still a higher word count on um, My Time to Die. Ah, there you go. By, only by that a couple is, hundred words. but That is very odd. Um, do you, so do we want to talk about things we liked, things we didn't like, and then maybe like going forward, where does the series go next, especially, you know, of particular interest after the, um, the lead hero has been killed off. Um, do we want to, do you want to discuss that? Yeah, I think, I think that this, this can kind of double as a, it's like a James Bond film franchise follow-ups plus the state of James Bond. Remember how we used to do the state of um podcasts we did it as like a series i don't know if it's a used to, used to do implies we could stop doing it on purpose well, or stop doing it by accident uh, like uh. i think we, we just we just ran out of things to do the state of <laughs> also though the states of all those companies is radically different now um so who mm. knows <laughs> these days um so okay things i liked about this film i as i said i really liked anna de Armas's character and and um I before when we did the Daniel Craig episode, my continue the franchise, which is going to probably dovetail into what the rest of the the discussion of the episode will be. I talked about how they should. I see. I I basically predicted what I think is exactly is going what is going to happen. As I said, they should kill off Daniel Craig's James Bond, and then you can keep the continuity that is currently going, so you don't have to. You know, you can still have like uh, Ben Whishaw and Naomi Harris and and um, Ray Fiennes like 
on mm. the, you know as characters in your film you can keep them around but instead you make Lashana Lynch the new 007 and she continues you know make a few films with her as 007 right yeah um I do I really liked Nomi Lashana Lynch's character I thought she was a great character but it is funny now and now that I'm here I'm like I, if I had to pick one of the strong female mm. characters in this film to have their own spin-off Anna de Armas is not only probably a, a more fun character but you know you've you haven't got as much lore strapped to mm. that because she's that barely in the to. film Mm. and you and you can think that i'm i'm being not you richard but like listeners might think i'm being like a little bit cute in thinking that they're definitely trying to do this they have been trying to do a female spin-off mm. to james bond for 30 years yeah so i'm not being i'm not being you know i'm not i'm not, i not know this is what i know no it's not about sexism i just know that barbara broccoli has been wanting to do this for so long and i think for the first time she has two characters that you probably could do this with yeah. i think maybe it'll be if they do do a nomi led 007 sequel to this i think it'll be it'll be more likely that anna de Armas will appear in that movie mm. than it will be that she'll get her own her own spin-off sure. sorry i said we'd talk about this at the end and i've immediately started talking about it but that's just because i really like those characters um i liked the um I liked giving him a daughter. I thought that was really interesting. Um, and the, maybe liked... they'll do an adaptation of 007 and a half. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> it's a, a Patreon reference to a series of uh, short stories I wrote um, mm. uh, about a mm. seven and a half year old spy. And if you want to know how that turns out, um, head along to our Patreon. But the answer is poorly even the even the patreon episode turned out poorly because aj's mic wasn't on <laughs> so yeah i'd say the char- the characters were the main things i liked about this movie more than the story yeah oh yeah yeah um which i think is um would be what phoebe waller bridge helped with mm, um, totally yeah, yeah but the yeah i i i I, gr- I tend to agree that i think it's like we won't the next james bond the next film in this universe won't be james bond that's a good way to put it yeah that yeah we're gonna see lashana lynch's character we're gonna see anna damas so, so, something like that they because people keep on saying you know oh like what, what, like let's have a female james bond but there's also a lot of people that are like just write better roles for women like they don't need mm. to be james bond and a way and a way to kind of have the best of both worlds is like yeah there's no reason 007 can't be female um, but mm. it's dumb to just be like, here's a, we're starting a new universe, and here's Jane Bond, because th- totally. that that does just scream like, you know, we couldn't think of anything better. But mm. you, um, you're having a character who you've already established; she's got her own, um, you know, wants, needs, uh, whatever, um, and she just has to happens to have that that title, the double O status. Uh, mm. That that makes a lot of sense. Um, and, and it is like, why would you cast? I mean, I, I guess it's, but it's, it's, it, it feels very deliberate to her casting to be like, we're introducing a new character and, and she's going to be around. It would be weird to introduce someone, an exciting new character to put in your last film if that was, you're then just going to go, all right, we're starting the universe again. Exactly. Um, and I think that here's I, I know i said we'd do this at the end but maybe we're doing it now um here's what i think is is going to be them trying to finagle a way that they can have their cake and eat it too right mm. i think here's what's going to happen i think they've taken a leaf out of sony's treatment of spider-man's book and i think what we'll likely see is that this series as in a sequel to no time to die with lashana lynch and maybe anna de Armas in it um and she's 007 and you can keep the cast that uh, it's quite an enjoyable cast especially i think um ben wishaw i quite like in these films and you call those 007 and you go yep she's 007 now while you're doing this you do a reboot and you go back to the 60s and do the 60s reboot of james bond that you've all that everyone's been you know that's the that's always been everyone's second choice like either give us a female one or give us a period piece well, I think, or, or a black one yeah and um, well they're, they're almost doing both those with lashana lynch right mm. um and i think that i wouldn't be surprised if they if they try to do this to appease everyone that they go no 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 we are doing we are recasting james bond we are still making james bond movies however you will see nomi again 
Mm. And, you know, they maybe won't call her ones 007, which kind of bums me. I think that's a cool way of doing it, a cool way to pass the torch. But I'm so... The, the fact that, like, half of my prophecy has come true already, that that Daniel Craig did die in this film, mm. I've, I, it feels so obviously like this is what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, that, that they're going to try and continue the series while also bringing another James Bond, but setting it in an explicitly different canon to this one. Because I think maybe mainstream audiences are, have are grown up enough now to understand when Yeah, things like that, yeah. I, uh, yeah, it is interesting. I, I don't want to, I don't, I don't think I want to see a period piece. No. No. I, like, I get that that's, and that, that's more just my own biases against the past. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I just doesn't interest me so much. Um, but I'm not I, saying I'm sure I want this. Do, yeah, I'm, I'm saying sure this is things. what I think is going to happen. Yeah, no, I'm just and I'm saying <laughs> with my thing, you know. Fair enough. Continue. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, 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 they've said that they're going to start looking for a new Bond next year, but they could just be mm-hmm. saying that. Yeah, I, I like your idea of, of parallel timelines, or maybe yeah, you do mm-hmm. like two or three no movies because they they don't necessarily have to be called like. Uh, double seven whatever but i'm sure they will they will give them some stupid name like um a, a, a beyond bond or something like that um <laughs> a james bond story yeah it, it'll be something something a double oh seven story yeah. you know like that sort of thing or just like heavily featured like double oh seven and the logo and stuff but yeah i mean could, that's what they do already <laughs> yeah exactly but they can they can kind of just give them because the naming conventions for Bond films are just so like generic, cool sounding thing, you know. So it's like, yeah. And and if we if we're talking about titles, James Bond really is the most free to establish this sort of thing because you can put 007 on both posters and just mm. you know it's it's never the actual title of the film, you know. So say you bring out say twenty twenty five sees the release of a sequel set in the No Time to Die verse that's mm. like. It's called like the Blood Rose, right? Something mm. ominous like that, and it's Double O Seven is hidden in the title, and much in the same way it is for all the other James Bond movies. And then you, then in twenty twenty six, you do Double O Seven and the Property of a Lady, and it's set in mm-hmm. two thousand. It's two thousand set in like nineteen sixty, and yeah. you know, like you, you are almost. It's, it's not like um, it's not like something like Star Wars where they need to make it clear there is no like all the james bond movies are just called different things yeah and so you can still do that and if people are confused even if uh, people do get confused they'll get over it yeah. it doesn't matter yeah <laughs> it doesn't, they'll still probably see the films you know yeah well um because the other thing as well is that so amazon's bought mgm now right so mm-hmm. they, they're going to be going fucking buck wild um with like like with you know spin-offs and tv shows prequels they, they've said that like the the james bond is always going to be cinematic and they're going to honor that like amazon mm. said that and that was like part of the deal was that james bond has to be uh, you get cinematic like theatrically released um yeah. but i yeah i i maybe it'll be like the equivalent of like a disney plus show will be the nomi harris stuff Oh, oh no 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 me um the no me stuff yeah 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 i think so i think and then and then keep keep the men and on the big screen that's you know what that's almost a way to that they're not being very honorable about this deal that they've but 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 the the no time to die one is the one that has all the star power currently attached to it you know you could cast a bunch mm. of no ones in the, in the in a reboot set in the 60s um who, who do yeah. you think's gonna play james bond i think they re- i think there are two camps in behind james bond that want different things hmm. and are also considerate of who the fan base is and so i think barbara broccoli wants a female led 007 movie i think she's probably pretty stoked that they that it's like a woman of color and all that sort of thing but that's also the type of thing which will enrage the you know the right type of people to enrage but Mm. it'll still affect the bottom line unfortunately and so the i reckon if they do this parallel reboot where james bond is brought back i don't think it'll be a particularly interesting i maybe he'll be young that's probably the only one like seven they and a half get away years old. with. <laughs> no, like, like, um, I mean, Harry Styles' name has been thrown around, like that kind of young, like right. in his twenties. I could see that happening. Mm. 
Um, but I certainly don't think we're going to be getting the radical, you know, ideas people have had for James Bond. Idris Elba. If they can, if if they continue forward with with the No Time to Die of this, I think Idris Elba would be a great Bond villain. Yeah. It could it could have a parallel have a meta textual element to like you know you took my mm. life you could have been me sort of yeah um, I would say my the the names I want to throw in the ring um, so that if they happen I could be like called it um, is Reggie Jean Page who's the the guy from Bridgerton who's just like the his stars on the rise and he's hot he's a person of color and it's like it just feels and he's British. Mm-hmm. And so it's like you, your perfect storm, um, and he's thirty three, so good age to kind of take the role. Um, oh, yeah. The other one would be uh, Richard Madden. Oh yeah, sure, yeah, totally. <laughs> like right, like yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can t- totally hmm. see that as well. Um, but yeah, I like I am so sure that this is the route they want to take. Hmm. It it feels so con- it feels like they've contrived it in a way that they can do that, and it's 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 like something like there've been rumors that. Um, that spider-man no way home is trying to separate itself from the mcu and make everything its own self-contained thing yeah and you can the the fact you can see things like that coming i think you could say the same for james bond uh bookies have um the the odds are um tom hardy richard madden and tom hopper um are joint favorites um, Tom it's Hardy, it, be, let it go. It's not going to be Tom Hardy. It's not going to be anyone you've heard of. Well, no, let me rephrase. It's not going to so be anyone, anyone you've heard of. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's not going to be any of the, these like massive names. Mm. James Bond has never, ever been cast as the like biggest actor in Hollywood. And I don't think Tom Hardy would want it. I yeah. think he could see the the um <laughs> the danger in taking a role like that. It's never going to be. He he's also like uh, he's forty four, so he's kind of at the age where people are like, yeah. you know, I don't want to commit to being this for ten years or whatever. Tom Hopper's yeah. and uh, he's Luther and um an Umbrella Academy. If you're not listening to this, isn't sure yeah. where they know that name from. Yeah, I would say out of that, yeah, like Tom, Tom Hardy's just like, of of course not. Yeah. But I would say I say Richard Jean Page is like a because you, you you the James Bond is cast as like should be cast as someone oh the guy from you only know him from one thing you don't know his mm. name yet mm. yeah yeah totally that's like great, yeah. oh oh the guy from Remington Steel yeah 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 or um I mean uh, like Roger Moore had had another one as well. Roger Moore was that as well hmm. like he was known. What was the? He was in. The, it was essentially Remington Steel, but before Remington Steel. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, back to No Time to Die. Is there anything you really didn't like about this movie, or is it just sort of a general kind of? No, just a general vibe? malaise. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I don't have anything super to write home about. I think, mm-hmm. I think it does drag on a bit, and the the third act i just kind of was a bit like all right we get the point like the mm. action the action is really is stranged really is um staged really interestingly it, it, it it's like it, it feels like it wants to be something like the raid or like old boy where it's like one guy we after right. he's been poisoned and he's like has to get to the control room it feels like it's trying to be you know one man taking down everyone but it just didn't have the same it doesn't have the same weight to it i guess the same grit mm. And so instead of the, what should be this big, you know, climactic moment rang a bit hollow for me, I would say. Sure. Yeah. I understand that. I would say part of that as well is that, um, I'm sorry, but small stakes are always more interesting than cataclysmic end of the world stakes. Mm. And when, when he dies and he blows up on the Island, I was like, it's good. They killed him. And I think that's poetic, but my God, Casino Royale is a better movie than this. And oh, yeah. it, 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 it made me more disappointed in No Time to Die to think about Casino Royale, James Bond, and know that this very self-contained story like finds its conclusion being nuked on an island with a zombie-esque virus. And I don't know how I felt about the virus either. I felt like it was maybe a little, it edged a little too into the fantastical yeah. for me. 
um, for what James Bond is usually about, um, certainly for what the Daniel Craig movies are usually about. Um, and ultimately, I think um, you're really shooting yourself in the foot by by acknowledging Vesper when you're also trying to make everyone be like, no, 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 he's in love with this woman from the worst James Bond movie since, <laughs> you know, you know, in, in 10 years or whatever. Like, I think, I think, I'll say this, I think it did a good job of um, retroactively making um, Spectre's stuff canon, but I, I, it's still, it's still, it's a, it's a good job, it's, but it doesn't change the fact that Spectre, happened you know it doesn't change the fact that Spectre still exists and we're still stuck with this character that uh I was never that interested in and um they also bring back um they bring back uh Christoph Waltz as Blofeld Mm. which I was also a little bit like "Ah, interesting like I do think he needed a a better movie to be in Mm. but it also does remind you of one of the worst movies from this bulk load of of the series mm. um I've, i'll read you my my letterboxd review to tr- try and um, yeah um also, uh, remind is, us both um is christoph waltz the first person to play blofeld twice he might be yeah it's <laughs> a good point mm. <laughs> it's very astute um i think that the that but even then like in this he barely does anything it's not yeah, he exactly. dies in the only scene he's in oh, he's, played, he's wrote, technically played by anthony dawson twice okay. um but only the hands and the back are nice. seen um yeah. and they're in two separate films but it's like i think they just use the same shots yeah yeah um here's what i wrote on letterbox when i saw it on the 7th of october i wrote no time to die's greatest victory is building some pretty substantial emotional stakes out of the scraps and wreckage of specter it's a more focused it's more focused than quantum of solace and while skyfall is higher highs it, pr- it, pr- it is probably the more consistent film with some really enjoyable action sequences and a great cast of characters it's a really good story and i enjoyed it a lot it's a great movie but casino royale is an entire meal not that any immediate comparisons need to be made i guess i am making those though um it's been a long time coming for this film and while it's not the most charismatic of Daniel Craig's Bond movies. It's certainly a fitting send-off uh, for all the hard work the actor put into making 007 remotely likable. <laughs> um, and in that sense, I am I am sad to see him go. I wish him the best. He clearly didn't want to do this for much longer. And, mm. you know, he's got the Knives Out series now, and I, and I hope that, that treats him better. But, yeah. yeah. Yeah, good on you, Daniel Craig. Um, I think we can probably wrap things up there. Um, mm-hmm. there's been a pretty loose episode uh, and I think that's why people tune in it's the charm of it <laughs> and that's all I have to say so catch us next time yeah everybody I guess um, you know follow us on Twitter and Instagram join the Discord there'll be a link in the show notes um, and uh, yeah Patreon stay tuned for the post credit do you want to do a post credit scene? yeah we'll do one um, yeah stay tuned for that and yeah uh, i've been aj i don't think i introduced myself this episode and i've been richard rich the name's richard rich Ma- richard martin all right welcome along everybody to the post credit scene sorry were you gonna say something <laughs> no, i was just gonna, I, was, I was gonna do it oh okay you do want to do it no no you've done it well this is it uh, this is the post credit scene where <laughs> if you donate $5 or more over at patreon.com slash copops, you get to give us something to talk about. And this is the post credit scene. Richard, what do we got today? All right. This one comes to us from Vincent Lara, who writes, Hey, you sexy boys. If you could sit down and have a tell all interview with someone in the film industry and they must answer all your questions truthfully, who would it be? And what would you ask them about? Stay gorgeous. My boys love you. Kiss emoji. Um, I, I, so I, I have like two answers for this so yeah. one is like um you go someone like kevin feige who's like entire career is answering questions vaguely um yeah. and get him to like you know like if he, if he has to answer everything truthfully like that that'd be that'd be fascinating because because it's this insight into the next 10 years of the mcu or whatever mm-hmm. and another another person that um just in a similar kind of vein that I, i've just I, I find Quentin Tarantino such an interesting person to interview um, or like listening to him in interviews, just hearing him talk. He's just so enigmatic um, because he's fucking crazy. But my other answer would be uh, like Kevin Spacey or Harvey Weinstein <laughs> that like having someone 
And it's like, and they have to answer 100% truthfully. They've got some kind of truth serum um, or some kind of liar, liar like curse on them. Mm-hmm. That yeah, it would, it would just be it would be fascinating to get someone who's or or to solve some kind of you know film based mystery that only like one person knows the answer to and they're, and they're secretive about it. Like, um, did uh, Johnny Depp and Leonardo DiCaprio kill River Phoenix? Find that out. Did uh, Christopher Walken have anything to do with the death of Natalie Wood? Like, find out you know the answer to to one of these these great unsolved film mysteries. What about you? What's the, can you read the specific wording of Vincent's question again? Uh, if you could sit down and have a tell-all interview with someone in the film industry and they must must answer all your questions truthfully, who would it be and what would you ask them about? Do you think Obviously if it was Harvey Weinstein or Kevin Spacey, I would ask them about their crimes um and and then have, you know, the the exclusive admission of guilt. Do you think Donald Trump counts as being in the film industry? Uh well he 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 quit um the 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 screen actors guild a few months ago mm. um i think i think the even but that happening means he yeah, is yeah, yeah. right i would have a tell-all interview with donald trump where i'd ask him one question and well and extrapolate on that question it'd be did they tell you about aliens when you became president right, right. did you get the the book of secrets from national treasure too did they tell you about aliens and i'd have donald trump he's not allowed to talk about anything else i don't care Mm. But if I'm gonna find, if I'm gonna listen to Donald Trump, it's gonna be finding out all the secrets about aliens. <laughs> what? You, you, or, or, like if he if he has to be 100 percent honest, and just do stuff like Kafifi was just a typo, right? And it, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess I didn't want to make it political. It's more just this is the Venn diagram of in the film industry and knows if aliens are real or not. Yeah. So right. I was going, I was going. For <laughs> but yeah, you could ask him about Kafifi. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, like the, the the thing I think is that you, he's not able to to peddle his political rhetoric, and he has to tell the mm. truth. Um, I mean, I guess like um, uh, Obama has a film production company, so oh, I'll talk to Obama then. Uh- <laughs> Thank God. 